think certainly we have seen the extent of China's ambition to lead the world in AI as their 2017 plan had initially articulated. And this uh, World AI Conference in Shanghai really showcases some of the advances of uh, leading companies and the city itself is uh, very much a center of gravity for new advances and innovations. And uh, while much of what is displayed is in the category of consumer applications, certainly AI chips are a major priority. And this has been a, a pain point uh, for Beijing. And with the 14 five-year plan, there is a you know, renewed drive and imperative of self-reliance, especially as there have been new uh, uh, US export controls and restrictions that have uh, that have denied Chinese companies access to chips as well as some of the, some of the impor important equipment uh, behind their manufacturing. So. I think certainly this is a uh, has been a priority in terms of investment, in terms of uh, companies going all out, and uh, a lot of uh, AI chip startups that are starting to release their own specialized uh, AI chipsets uh, that are uh, d d dedicated to training AI systems. And yeah, I think that's perhaps too soon to tell how successful these efforts will be. But as they're as this uh, as, as self reliance uh, becomes a m more and more of an urgent priority for. Mm. Of, of, of for the Chinese government. Uh, we're certainly seeing uh, not just the s s central direction, but uh, startups uh, springing into action and, and a, a drive to uh, to catch up where China has been has been behind on this front up until now. But when can China achieve a self-reliance when it comes to, you know, it's uh its own production of chips. You know, we're hearing uh, Huawei doing a deal with JT Automation in Shenzhen. Uh, we're also looking at how China might be uh, uh, buying out a big business, uh, one of the largest uh, UK chip manufacturers uh, in due course. When can they get to a point where they don't need to depend on overseas suppliers? So then when, when you look at a, a technology that is has that level of complexity, uh, certainly it is difficult to catch up and difficult to close that gap. And yeah, I think estimates vary, but certainly the fact that there continue to be these targeted acquisitions uh, going after overseas companies, as well as multiple incidents and allegations of of espionage or uh, te technology transfer undertaken, both through illicit and illicit means, uh, targeting the chip sector, I think is an indicator of where there is uh, yes, it's still weak points there. And I think the hope would, would be uh, sort of within the 14 five year plan timeframe to achieve uh, some notable progress on uh, on these fronts. But I think, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, e easier said than done. And the returns on investment for some of the resources that are pumped, being pumped into the sector, uh, I think uh, r remain to be seen as uh, some of these, some of these efforts start to come to fruition. And think of yeah, very much the case for looking at China's national innovation ecosystem and artificial intelligence. There's a lot of strength in applications and implementation, a big focus of the World AI Conference, for instance, on smart cities mm. with uh, self, self-driving uh, vehicles, autonomous transportation, uh, applications uh, work, uh, intended to improve governance and also, uh, uh, also in surveillance, of course. Uh, but yeah, I think there's still a, still a concern with weaknesses in cutting edge research and how to mm -hmm. really transition from being a, having strength in implementation to starting to be more on the cutting right. edge of AI across the board and recent advances in natural language processing, for instance, uh, with, uh, with uh, what yeah. one new model uh, unveiled recently really, really speak to some of the progress there.